Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the all new second generation 2024 Skoda Kodiak. This is not the biggest seller at Skoda. However, they did sell quite a few of the first generation of the Kodiak. Uh, this sold more than 860,000 units, which is quite a good number for such a big SUV in Europe. However, they do sell this car abroad as well or outside of Europe. They do sell this car in India. I believe it's actually pretty popular in India. So if you're watching from India, hello, welcome to the channel. The first generation of the Kodiak wasn't available with any hybrid powertrains. The second generation is. It's available with a mild hybrid powertrain and a plug-in hybrid powertrain as well. Today I'm driving the mild hybrid powertrain, but you can also get other petrol and even regular diesel engines. The lowest power output you can get in the new Kodiak is 150 horsepower. And that will be this mild hybrid powertrain I've got here, which you can get up to 265 horsepower in a Kodiak on petrol. Again, you can also get a diesel powered train and you can also still get the 4x4 powertrain as well. So you get four wheel drive on the Kodiak. This mild hybrid car doesn't have that. Uh, this mild hybrid powertrain and all the other powertrains are connected to an automatic transmission. You cannot get a manual anymore on the Kodiak. But I will tell you a little bit more about the powertrains on this car and the driving experience as a whole in just a second while well, we're going to take the car out for a drive. First, let's have a quick walk around the car. Let's have a look at the all new design of the all new Kodiak. Now I have to say, I think the front end design still looks a little bit like the outgoing model. I think the grille and the bumpers, it's all pretty similar compared to the outgoing model. I think the main difference are the headlights. You get these new headlight units that have like a layered design with like on top you get the headlights and the daylight running light as well. And down below you get a small headlight unit as well. Now the back end design of the new Kodiak does look completely new and completely different compared to the back end design of the outgoing first generation Kodiak. On the first generation Kodiak, you had two regular singular tail lights on the side of the car. On this car, you basically get one big tail light, at least it looks like this, because the tail lights on the side are connected with this LED strip. However, this is not an LED strip. It's just a piece of red plastic because there are no lights integrated in this strip. I'm sure they will be in the facelift in four years, but for now, this is just a fake LED strip running in the middle. Now you also get the new Skoda lettering that is written in the Czech way. So you get the S with the small rooftop on top of it. Then let's talk boot space because this car is famous for its boot space. This is the biggest car that Skoda will sell you. And this car offers 900 liters of storage space. However, if you go for the plug-in hybrid version, you get less storage space. You get actually 160 liters less because of the big battery. And then you're left with 765 liters, which is still a whole lot of boot space. Don't get me wrong. You can also get a seven-seater option in the Kodiak. Just like the first generation Kodiak, the Kodiak is still available as a seven-seater with a third row. However, not if you go for the plug-in hybrid because the plug-in hybrid is not available with a third row. Again, because of the big battery pack. All right, let's go for a drive. This is the key, by the way, the very familiar Skoda key. Um, now you get this new shifter. The shifter is not located in the center console anymore. You got the shifter now that is located on the steering column and you have to flip it. So let's flip it. So let's flip it to D. Let's check if there's no one coming and let's set off. Can I make it? Yeah. All right, so like I told you, a mild hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, regular diesel, reg regular petrol engines as well. I'm driving the mild hybrid version here, and this version has 150 horsepower. This is basically the entry-level version when it comes to power. This is plenty of power for a car like this. However, this is definitely not the fastest version or the fastest car out there. I do have to say, if you're going for the seven-seater option in this version, I'm not sure if the car is powerful enough with this mild hybrid powertrain. If you got like two adults up front and two adults in the backseat area and two small kids all the way in the back, you might start to struggle a little bit with this powertrain. Now this mild hybrid version also has a small electric motor next to the regular petrol engine. It's only a small motor, that's why they call it a mild hybrid. And that small electric motor is only there to assist the petrol engine it cannot work on its own. You cannot drive this car fully electric because then you have to go for the plug-in hybrid powertrain, which may be the most interesting powertrain in this car because 
it has plenty of power with 204 horsepower, which is less than the most powerful version that you can get with 265 horsepower. However, you do get the instant torque from the electric motor, so I wouldn't be surprised if the plug-in hybrid powertrain feels actually a little bit faster than the most powerful powertrain in this Kodiak. I haven't tried the 265 horsepower version of the Kodiak, it wasn't available today. I'm sure it's plenty fast, but the plug-in hybrid powertrain has more advantages. For example, you can drive up to 100 kilometers on pure electric power because the plug-in hybrid powertrain also has a pretty big a battery pack with 27.5 kilowatt hours of capacity and you can even fast charge the plug-in hybrids uh, with 50 kilowatts which is fine for a plug-in hybrid and which is fine for a car with a relatively small battery pack now the kodiak still drives like the first generation kodiak this is still a very friendly comfortable car to drive this is a real family car not just because of the space but also because of the drive comfort that you get it's a really comfortable car and it's a really easy car on the highway. The noise level is pretty low even on the highway and even on higher speeds. I drove the car up to 150 kilometers an hour today on the highway and I was really surprised by the noise levels. It was actually still pretty quiet here in the cabin. So I'm guessing Skoda used a lot of sound insulation in the car. Just like in the Superb, I recently drove the new generation of the Superb as well. So if you're interested in another car with a really big boot space, do check out my video on the Superb. Now I am driving the car at the moment in the mountains and I have to say the car really holds up. Again, I am driving the entry level version with the basic suspension and it handles pretty good, I have to say. Now you probably shouldn't be driving too hard in an area like this, but I can really push the car without having to back down because of the suspension. Then let's talk a little bit about the technology in this car. You got a lot of tech here in the interior. You get this new infotainment screen. This is not a completely new screen because I've seen this screen before in a lot of Volkswagen products. For example, the Volkswagen ID7, the renewed ID4, and the renewed Skoda Enyaq that I drove recently as well. Again, look for the link in the description to that video. And this is a very pleasant infotainment screen to use. First of all, it's pretty big, 13 inch, but there's also a lot of compute power. So it's not laggy, it is quite fast. And the software is a lot better than the software from a couple of years ago from Volkswagen and actually works pretty good you also get this new digital gauge cluster in front of you and you can project the map from the navigation on the digital gauge cluster as well which is really helpful so you don't have to turn your head to the right to look to this screen because if you do uh, the system actually will become a little bit angry at you for not looking at the roads which is a little bit annoying I know it's safer and all but if you put a big screen in the center you will expect people to look at the big screen and when people are actually looking at the screen, it's a bit annoying when the system gets a little bit angry. Now the fit and finish here in the interior is pretty well done, I have to say. I'm always surprised when I get into a new Skoda, how well the fit and finish is in the interior. Basically all models from Skoda look a lot prettier in the inside compared to an identical model from Volkswagen, which always surprised me a lot. Now for example, you get a lot of Alcantara here in the interior on the dashboard, on the seats, on the door panels as well, for example, also on the armrest. You also get this fake wood inserts in the door panels as well, which also look pretty neat, and you also get these fancy door handles. Now you get way more storage in this car compared to the outgoing Kodiak, because the shifter moved from the center console up to the steering column, so there's now a whole lot more room in the center console. You get two cup holders, there are two chargers wireless chargers and i believe they are cooled which is really nice so your phone won't overheat all the time you also get a big glove box and there's also some storage beneath the armrest what i also really like are the three smart dials that you get here that's what skoda likes to call these three round dials they're called smart dials because they're actually well pretty smart because they got multiple functions because if you press them you can get a new function to the dial so for example the fan speeds, the drive modes even, or just the temperature. What I don't really like about the dials is the way how they feel. They feel really finicky, really plasticky. I'm not so sure about that. Now that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. And then I'll see you in the next one.